I'd like to acknowledge Australia's First Nation people as the traditional custodians of the land, and for this episode in particular, the Garigal and Gayamagal people. I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. The world of craft beer has evolved and uh, we just want to land these beers as best we possibly can. I guess being involved in the brewing industry, it, it is a, such an amazing industry. Everyone does work so well together um, and help each other out. It's, um, it's nothing unlike any other industry that I've worked in. This is Over a Glass. I'm Shante Whale. Freshwater Brewing Company is located in Brookvale on the northern beaches. It was founded by a group of industry mates, as most good ideas are. They've recently launched their new tap room and restaurant, and today I'm joined by co-owner Johnny Bucknell and head brewer Brett Phillips. Hi, Brett. Hi, Johnny. Thanks for joining me. Hello. Hi, Shabbat. Thanks. Lovely to have you with us. A busy time for you guys, no doubt, uh, joining us from the tap room. But how did the new opening of your space go, and, and how was the big reveal? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a long time coming, so it's uh, very exciting for us. It's sort of a bit of a, a, a pinch-me kind of moment where, you know, you, you transition from what was a, an idea to a to a reality, and just seeing kind of happy people walking in the door is uh, is unreal. So um, yeah, it's it's been a busy last few weeks, but uh, it's, it's definitely rewarding. Openings are always pretty scary, only because you can't really control everything until you've actually got people in. Did you do a like a, a soft kind of opening, or did you just open the doors and go for it? <laughs> yeah, we did a soft opening with friends and family. Um, which, uh, which is your classic, you know, everyone's got an opinion uh, and, and your friends and family tell you all the things that you should be doing better. So it was quite funny uh, to get that going. But, uh, and, then we, and then we just got to the point where we thought we'd just um, open the doors on a Sunday um, and just uh, see who, who breezes in. And uh, fortunately, there were enough, uh, enough people that were kind of engaged and gone along the story that uh, it was a, it was a busy day that Sunday. So it was, uh, it was a nice, uh, a nice way to get going. Luckily, a few thirsty people. That's good to hear. So tell me how you got uh, freshwater brewing started and, and the story of kind of its conception. Uh, yeah. So, so it's sort of a longer story in so far that I originally it was just uh, myself just sort of tinkering away with a bit of a dream in the back of my mind, uh, you know, just home brewing and, and wanting to, you know, brew beers that were, um, that I called kind of passing the freshy test. So it was, uh, you know, cracking a, a, a beer with a group of mates, just sort of sitting at, over looking at freshy, uh, beach and, you know, sundown, sundown is on a Saturday afternoon kind of thing. Um, and just wanted to, I was sort of in and out of the uh, industry at the time and, um, you know, working, doing some consulting and then later working for, uh, in the marketing department. Um, and, uh, I just wanted to brew beers that were kind of fit for, for the neighborhood that I live in. And, uh, and so it was like crisp lagers and some saisons and so just really sort of refreshing beers that I can share with my friends. And then, you know, these things take a while. So, uh, kind of bouncing ideas off friends and, and, uh, and then, yeah, it was kind of brought it, brought in the, brought in the friends as, as it kind of began to actually begin to take shape. So, uh, we launched the first beer as a contract brew, our freshy pills. Um, and then, uh, last year and that kind of picked up speed. It was just right in lockdown. Um, and so, you know, me and, uh, Tom, another one of our founders, he and I were just, racing around Sydney, dropping beers around, you know, during lockdown when people couldn't leave their houses. Uh, so it was a kind of a funny, funny time to get going, but it also, um, you know, really kind of did the community thing because a lot of people in the community wanted to get behind it. And so, you know, once we knew we uh, were going to move into a, um, move to the tap room um, and had a bit of a timing on that, that's when Brett got involved um, and we sort of started to, look at the beers on the horizon that kind of he could he could run with as well I, I can't imagine I, with you know coming up with something from from the start of I, I would like to you know make a beer and doing something like you said as a homebrew all the way up to when you're actually putting something into a tin and you've got a label and everything that goes into it tell me what the first moment of kind of cracking that first beer when it was all kind of tidied up and done, what was that moment like? Did you have a, a celebration together or did you just kind of sit down at, at the beach and drink a beer? 
<laughs> yeah, it was it was a bit like that. It was you know just it was actually just at the on the canning line. You know when you're standing there and you've 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 done all your licensing, you've got all your paperwork, you've got the branding already, and and then you know there's all this thinking and and all these ideas, and then it's very simple process of just cracking a can and drinking a beer um and that beer just tastes that little bit better than you ever imagined and then you know loading up the ute full of cases of beer and driving it to freshwater uh and sharing it with people was just uh was was unreal i can't even imagine how i mean it's such a long journey so i can imagine that that was one of the best beers that you've ever tasted can you tell me how you got this, your start in the industry, Johnny. Let's start with you, and then Brett. Tell me a little bit about how you, you know, became a brewer. Uh, for me, yeah, my background's marketing, and um, I've sort of I'm a home brewer, kind of tinkering away in the background. But brand strategy and marketing is the is the thing that um, you know used to pay the bills, and um, and so you know, like I'd worked on some big brands in the past, and worked on some craft brands, and worked on some you know all sorts of random RTDs and innovation projects with Diageo and stuff like that. And I always had the brand first in my mind. And, you know, because I'm one of those sort of obsessive home brewers, I kind of put the two, two and two together. So kind of found myself working on projects that were in the craft world and then um, really decided to go for it um, and worked at, um, at Modus up on uh, in Monavale. And, uh, I was doing some other bits and pieces consulting with craft, but that was the sort of the first kind of industry job. And then it was time to just try and do something for, you know, something for ourselves. Yeah. How rewarding. And Brett, for yourself, you know, you've obviously had some experience brewing in the past. Was it just your love of beer that, uh, got you, got you into that place? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I originally, I have a bit of a wine background. I grew up in a wine region and uh, when I was younger, and I think that definitely helped spark my interest in fermentation and and uh, and how beverages are made on that side of things. And then it was probably uh, in my younger years when I was traveling through, backpacking through Europe, I really fell in love with the, the European tradition around beer. I'd always loved beer, but that their their traditions I um yeah simply adored and then when um I finally came back home I decided yeah let's give brewing a crack um it seemed really interesting and um yeah then I just kind of went from there and, and did a little bit of study and I was lucky enough to um score a brewing gig straight off uh, at Modus uh, in Monavale and uh and then that's where Johnny and I met um Oh, probably about four or five years ago now. And um, from there, uh, yeah, I was there for a few years. And then I went to Wayward in Camperdown and was brewing there for a while. Mm. Uh, and then when then when Johnny was, I saw the brand and, and knew what he was doing and absolutely fell in love with that. And we both align in terms of beer styles and, and what we think beer should be. So we, um, well, when uh, I, I said, as soon as you need a head brewer, uh, I put my hand up for that and jumped at it as quick as I could. Oh, that sounds uh, sounds like a match in heaven. But I think it's really interesting because we have a hugely competitive Aussie beer market. Um, I feel like there's a new craft beer every time I walk into my local liquor store. And I love that because I like to keep it fresh. I, I drink all styles of beer. Um, I drink them ice cold. I drink them, you know, almost room temperature. I like all the styles. But w- talk to me about the style of beers you you create and why you think that they're unique yeah so i I guess i guess probably the overarching um uh, philosophy um or um, concept that we we both agree on and it's uh, going back to what johnny mentioned is is the freshy test of drinking beers beers down at the beach and and suiting that environment um that that easygoing environment where beer is like it's part of that social experience um not necessarily the the sole focus of that experience so what i mean by that is it, it's um kind of the lubricant i guess of the conversation to good times to memories and and celebrations and we're trying what we're trying to do with that and and bring that into the beers is, is through the styles that we do um that we produce and they're all along 
um, easy, easy drinking, um, refreshing, and and then also going back to those those um, traditional processes and beers that I fell in love with back in back in Europe. Um, so, I guess at, at the moment, I think we've only got one ale on tap. Um, the rest are lagers, um, pilsners, and um, either German, Czech. Um, there's some hobby. There's a New Zealand style uh, pilsner, uh, which brings uh, more flavour for the hop heads. Um, but uh, yeah, generally that's that's our that's our main kind of um, idea around what kind of styles we're going to produce. Yeah, I mean, I think like you know when it comes down to the craft beer movement um yeah and i'm i put myself in the beer nerd category um you do end up spending more time talking about the beer than catching up with your friends and we kind of said you know let's let's not do that let's try and put the let's try and have the conversation the sort of heart of the of (laughs) things and you know the beer the beer quality should be you know amazing we should be brewing the best quality beers but it shouldn't interrupt the conversation it should fuel it um and so you know we wanted to have these these crisp easy drinking beers but we also wanted to you know not make it not shout about it and and let that let the sort of quality beers shine in their own light but you know hope that actually people return for the good times and the quality beer not just the quality beer mm. I think that that's a really interesting line to have because, like you said, you know, beer should be enjoyable. It should suit the environment and suit the the culture and the people, but it should be delicious and refreshing. There's a a heap of things that when I went on your website that kind of jumped out to me, especially um, the fact that you have a a wedge cerveza, which I think is awesome because I talk a lot about having a wedge in between a meal and, and often having, you know, like a nice little schooner halfway through. I've got two hands. I can have more than two drinks at one time. And I like the idea that, you know, you've really designed your, um, your, your, all of your beers around this kind of refreshing ability to drink, you know, kind of throughout the day and, and with good mates, because I think that that is so important. But, um, Talk to me a little bit, Brett, about Pilsner, because I think that there's quite a few different styles of Pilsners on the market. And sometimes I feel like that gets a bit clouded in in kind of what what Pilsner style people are after. Um, so talk to me a little bit about your Pilsner and a little bit about just that kind of um, beer category in general. Yeah, no worries. Uh, it's, it's probably my favourite style of beers and... Uh, I guess the home of Pilsner is uh, in the Czech Republic. Um, it, it's where that's where it originated uh, in Pilsen. Uh, and um, I guess not not to go back too far into the the history of it, but that style of beer um, came from that area, and it was due to the fact they had really soft water, and that water allowed a to allow them to brew a really pale and and soft beer. And that beer, I guess, was so well received, it just spread throughout the world. And um, I guess that's a pretty basic history of it. But um, if you look at, um, say, a German-style Pilsner versus a, a Czech Pilsner, uh, they're, they're, they're quite similar apart from, um, say, using local ingredients such as um, Sars Hopser uh, from the Czech Republic. Uh, and then there's the German style hops, um, such as Technang, um, and they impart slight differences, which then lead to um, those, those subtleties in flavour. And then you can go all the way to say, um, like an Australian Pilsner, which then is is slightly different in the way it's brewed. Um, However, they're all they all run along the same theme of being refreshing, um, soft, and, uh, and and like a pale a pale style beer. Um, our so our Duke uh, Pilsner it's uh, modelled around the um, the Czech style, and uh, we, as best as we can, we we source as much um, as much ingredients as we can um, that are Czech, such such as Sars hops. And uh, and the highest quality malt that we can get, uh, and in doing so, you you really um, you're able to brew a beer that is um, in line with that flavour, um, and and, uh, and really gets those traditional flavours through. That's 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 our main goal in the end um, with with brewing that style of beer. 
Uh, and then we also have our Freshy Pills, which it's more on the German side of things, and it uses um, uh, some newer style hops out of Germany, um, such as Mandarina Bavaria and um, Halatau Blanc. And those hops, um, they're a little bit more, they're called New World, I guess you could say, and they impart more, a little bit more fruitiness um, than the, um, the older traditional style hops. Um, from Germany, but that is we use those just to impart a little bit of um, a little bit of difference in that product, and also to kind of keep up with, I guess, current consumer um, taste as well. But they're, they're the two main pilsners that we have. Um, uh, we do have a third, um, yeah, and that is uh, the Pacific Pilsner, and that is uses solely kiwi hops, and that. That in, in in that in that um that same vein, it's using um, hops from New Zealand that they bring um a lot of tropical flavors um like gooseberry and um, mango and then also subtle um, grape like flavors like Sauvignon Blanc and um and in doing so you, you create quite a unique um, flavor profile um uh, in, in in that beer as well. It sounds like you were uh, right up your alley t- seeing as you were somebody involved in the wine industry and now involved in the beer industry. So it sounds like you can I could identify with that. I love when I saw that you do so many, p- well, that you're interested in pills because that's one of my favourite styles of beer. I've always just loved Czech, you know, like I'll smash a Czech var any day of the week. But I think that the, the SARS aroma of flavour, I don't know if, what it is, but for me it always just walk that line of like multi hoppiness but not – crushingly like over intense bitterness and I just find that it just hits that part of my palate where I'm just like this is going down such a treat and I always look at my beer and go where did that go like why is that disappeared so quick <laughs> yeah it, 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 it's that there's, there's there's a lot of flavor yet it's so well balanced and and it's yeah due to yeah the, the correct water profile um balanced salts um and and it, yeah uh, high quality malt and hops it, it just leads to such a beautiful beer oh, sounds delicious i'm salivating um the concept of your new space that you have is described i love this backyard beach beach site beachside what does that mean to you guys uh yeah so it was you know how do you um like evolving from the freshy test and the beers brewed for you know the neighborhood how do you then bring it to life in a warehouse you know a little bit you know it's basically we're sort of five minutes from the beach but we're in an industrial area and so it's like how do you then bring that vibe uh to the space and so um yeah it's kind of you want it to have that kind of indoor outdoor sort of experience you want it to be very relaxed um and the food that we have kind of helps us kind of convey that back backyard sort of uh barbecue vibe so we've got kind of um uh skewers and sandwiches and um you know, that, that match the beers. So you can kind of, you know, catch up with your mates in this sort of light, bright uh, space. There's lots of sort of pastels and, um, yeah, it's got a good good vibe, lots of palm trees um, and uh, the music kind of fits. It's all kind of, it's all been thought through. Um, and, uh, yeah, and it's all, you know, we just wanted it to be welcoming and inclusive and, uh, and, and that, that's been, and when you're the sixth brewery in the area, you have to be a bit different as well. So um, we've just tried to s- stick to stick to what we know and and make this um, bright space that people will um, hopefully just wander in accidentally and then stay for a couple of couple of check pilsners. I love that. If someone you know was listening in from overseas or and wasn't familiar with freshwater, how would you describe the lifestyle there? Um, it's amazing. Uh, no, it's, uh, it's, it, uh, it's, uh, so it's, it's, it's like a, a little neighborhood suburb, um, you know, five minutes from Manly. So Manly is the sort of the, the suburb on the Northern beaches of Sydney that people know it's got that kind of international tourism attraction. Um, but kind of the next suburb over is this kind of quiet a little town uh it's got a great community um lots of people kind of you know want to support one another but it's got this beautiful beach and it's you know it, it's and and the thing is with the northern beaches is 
you knock on to the next speech and the next speech and the next speech. So there's, they, they all kind of evolve into one another. We sit between Freshwater and Coco um, in, in the this industrial estate, Brookvale. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, it's like as soon as you get the ferry from the city to Manly, you drop down a, drop down a sort of in pace levels. And then the, the further north you go on the northern beaches, you drop down further and further and further until you're very, very casual. Uh, so, so Freshie's very chilled. Oh, I love that area. I'm actually on the south coast, so kind of similar beachside vibes, but on the south. And I just think, yeah, you just feel the kind of stress and tension kind of dissolve the further you kind of travel up that area. And, um, you know, I, I keep saying when, when we're traveling up, Curl Curl's a spot we, we stop in a lot. Oh, I wish there was a few more places to get a great, you know, a great bite and a, and a great kind of couple of cold beers. And uh, I think that you guys have done that. So that's pretty cool. What are the um what are the challenges, you know, in the current climate that where you're sitting now and, and what do you love most about the jobs that you do? Yeah, uh, I love beer, uh, first and foremost. Uh, <laughs> no, I think um I, I guess being involved in the brewing industry it, it is a such an amazing industry. Everyone does work so well together um and help each other out. It's um it's nothing unlike any other industry that I've worked in. Um and and in terms of on the brewing side of things, it just having so much creativity and, and being able to express that through um, different processes, ingredients, um, and yeah, that that is a, like such I get so much enjoyment from that. Um, and, and here at Freshwater, what we've what we're trying to, to do and 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 pay respect and and try and emulate those um, traditional processes from from Europe. Um, like such as lagering um, or decoctions, like uh, our Czech pills and jukes, we we lager that for five months. Um, so just being like having a boss such as Johnny um, that we align on on ideas like that to enable me to do that. Most breweries would would scoff at that just due to the amount of time that that beer is kept in tanks. So the fact that we can do that and and create a quality product because um, I feel like it does definitely lead to an improvement in flavour. Yeast um, still. Um, uh, still at work, even at, at those low temperatures for um, a long period of time. So I feel like that's how we really round out flavours in beers is um, through that maturation period. And, um, yeah, being, being able to just try all new things, new ingredients, new processes, new yeasts, um, it's always the, the market's always changing and, um, and keeping up with that and trialling new things is, is we get a lot of enjoyment out of. Um, yeah, and what, what a what – a, amazing way to do it and is um is through beer so yeah it's a, it's a it's a great job yeah i mean from my point of view it's uh yeah what is craft i think i think as brett just said our um the craft the world of craft beer has evolved and uh, and we just want to we want to land these beers as best we possibly can um and you know we've got this clear thought in our head and that's the that's the fuel that we want to, you know, we want to land. Um, in terms of the challenges and challenges in the current climate, I mean, it's easy to say, uh, obviously coming out of COVID and interest rates going up and it hasn't stopped raining all year. You know, that's, those aren't really the best big conditions for starting a new brewery, let alone a, a new business. Um, you know, and then I think like for us, um, you know, the biggest challenge is probably regulation in the area. Um, you know, the getting a brewery open is is a tough thing to do because there are so many boxes you've got to tick, and the do sort of stifle the the innovation and and uh, the kind of you know things that when you talk to regular uh, consumers or punters, they're blown away that you're you know trading hours or you're you know whatever are, are restricted, but. I think that's that's just the nature of the beast, and I think what we're, you know, the the, the positive that I think we'd spin on it is that, you know, we've got such a great um, brewing community here in Brookvale and Sydney and in Australia, and so it's, there's so many good um, breweries that we can that have all gone through the same stuff. And they've all been through the same challenges and, you know, re- over-regulation and we've all gone through COVID and, and there's, there's such a great 
group of brewers around that you can lean on and get advice from and you know catch up we've, we've just sort of been at quite a few beer festivals recently and it's a great way to bouncing ideas and thinking about beers in a different way and um and and <laughs> trading war stories and so i think the the challenges are going to keep coming i think that um you know the the, the cost of living around the world is, is definitely a, a challenge but i think um uh people will hopefully always want to drink a cold beer and and uh and you know doesn't matter what the weather throws at us people seem to want to support us so yeah i think that's that's what we'd say i imagine there's got to be you know especially with you guys kind of launching and re- reopening or well, opening your tap room as well at this this kind of current climate there's got to be um you know re- like a lot of businesses, they had to kind of go back to the drawing board and change everything that they they started with because so many factors had changed. There's got to be some positives to you guys kind of opening at that time and, and hopefully in the next few years, we like you said, we get some sunlight, perhaps things improve a little bit and uh, you'll have some of these hard years hopefully behind you guys. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing is as well is that you've, you've got to just stick at it. Um, I think sometimes it's easy, you know, just to go, well, should we do this? Should we do that? Should we just go to the lowest common denominator? Should we just brew this style of beer? Cause we know that people will want it. But I think the world doesn't need another brewery. <laughs> so you've got to go, well, we've got to do something that is, it adds benefit, um, and adds, adds something. And I think what we're trying to do is, is that we want to brew these beers that are, you know, top quality uh, and we want to have space that is super inclusive and welcoming and positive and uh, so you just got to ride it out because yeah as you say you hope that, that, that you turn the corner but um, you also hope you take people on the journey as well so yeah we'll see <laughs> I, I agree with you that we you know we've got you know some breweries and, and wineries and everything has a carbon footprint but I have to say a gathering place is something that's so important especially during times of, of hardship so I hope that that's what uh, you guys see that as and, and that people do find a little bit of um, solace in walking in and, and being able to you know let the day go and, and, and kick back with uh, good company so um, I think that you know you'll be definitely giving something to the community. All right, man, if you could only drink three beverages for the rest of your life, what would they be and why? Johnny, you first. Oh, okay. Well, mine's – so they came to me within about 10 seconds of, of – like as soon as I thought what – like it was very easy. First one, uh, Saison du Pont, which is the kind of the original Saison in Belgium. It's 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 – I drink a, a – yeah, I drink a lot of it. It's great. Um, it's a bit of a, a – but then without blowing our own trumpet, the other two would be our beers, and that's because we wanted to emulate the kind of the classics. So our Duke's Czech Pilsner. So one of my epiphany beers was uh, Pilsner Urkel, um, the kind of origin, original Pilsner um, from uh, Pilsen. Um, and I remember I worked on the marketing for it uh, years and years ago, and it was a – it was a game changer for me. It was just this most delicious beer. And, and Dukes is our kind of representation of that. And uh, that sort of softness of the water and the bitterness and just uh, I could drink it forever. Um, and and then changing gear a bit, um, our dusky dark lager, uh, which is only available at, uh, at our tap house. Like to, to get a dark beer that you can drink lots of is quite hard. Often when people think about dark beers, they think of them being heavy and they think of them being, you know, roasty and, to, and, and, and hard. And what we wanted to do was have a beer that you could drink it pretty quickly and then go, oh, I wouldn't mind another one of those. And, and so I think that the, the, those three I could live with for the rest of my life. Uh, a spritzy saison, a, a tasty soft uh, pilsner and a dark lager. I wouldn't need anything else. Perfect. I think you've covered some pretty good bases there. What about you, Brett? Yeah, they do sound really nice. I'm like, oh, those three, those three do sound. I could probably take those as well. But um, <laughs> in oh, probably number one for me would be Bundy and Coke. Just a really nice, refreshing. <laughs> <I'm joking. laughs> 
<laughs> hey, I was not going to judge you, I promise. <laughs> preferably, preferably on glass. That's, yeah, no, I'm, I'm joking, yeah. Uh, I, oh, Cooper's Pale for me, that was probably my first beer um, that was like, wow, this is this is something different. This is this is something with a bit more flavour. Um, yeah, Cooper's Pale would be a classic for me. And, and uh, again, another Pilsner, um, such as Pilsner Curl, as Johnny was mentioned, I would happily... Um, happily drink that for the rest of my life no problem at all and probably thirdly would be um uh mezcal uh i fell in love with that um backpacking backpacking through um mexico and, and south america obviously mezcal i'm from mexico but um when i was there I just absolutely fell in love with it and, and um the little mezcal areas and and sitting down and just the whole um traditions and and the social social side of um of mexico uh i yeah I, I simply adored so if if i could only go to one venue and and drink one beverage the rest of my life it, that would definitely be up there just going to a mezcaleria be amazing um yeah beautiful there's such a nuanced complexity in and no matter what family it came from it was was always so different and so full of flavor so that was an amazing drink yeah, good choice. I mean, so cohesive, right? I mean, there's only a few places I think in the world where you really see the kind of culture so well integrated into the food and the drink and the lifestyle and mezcal is such a good drink. I was wondering if you were going to go for something a little bit stronger to put some hair on your chest. So yeah. <laughs> very, very good choices. <laughs> Gentlemen, it's been such a pleasure. Uh, I am looking forward to trying some of your beers and getting them uh, in the Berg where I live. It's a little harder to get some of your beers down here, but I'll be on the hunt. And uh, it's been such a pleasure. And congratulations on opening the new tap room. Like I said, definitely needed up there. And, um, you know, what a hub of an area to, to go drinking and, and, and cruising around. So best of luck for the future. I hope, hope we get some sunshine for you guys. And thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having us. Cheers. This is Over a Glass. I'm Shante Whale. Stay tuned for more stories from the world of wine and drinks. Listen in every Thursday on your podcast app. Follow us on Instagram at Over a Glass Pod and contact us at overaglass at deepintheweeds.com.au.